On the math track, creatine 11 and 12, we have two parts, the creatine 11 and 12 and then also the mastering calculus and trigonometry. 10, 11, 12, two sites, a student and then an administration site. Let's go to the student site first of all. We will select our class here, so all the different classes that are registered will appear. We select our class. All the students that are registered for that class will appear. We select our name. If we look at the modules, first of all, we have coordinate geometry, factoring, probability, quadratic equations, second degree relations, statistics, system of equations, and transformational geometry. The rest is what we call the teacher's tools, calculator, chart, probability tools, spreadsheet, virtual tiles, and a word processor. Let's look at the first one, coordinate geometry. Now in coordinate geometry, we'll start off by doing a lesson. Now we've got six topics here. To get the learning outcomes for those six topics, we click on screen and we get a list of the different learning outcomes. Let's get back to the topics. We select the first one, introduction to slope. Click on next step and we work through it step by step, our interactive lesson, which gets explained to us visually. And we'll see here that we've got 21 screens and we're busy with screen one. The topics will take us back to the six different topics. Forward will take me to the next page. Whenever your next step is um, gone, you just click on forward and we're busy with step four or four. Click on forward and we carry on with the next lesson by clicking on it, on next step. Right, let's go out, let's take another strand. This is just one way of um, giving the lessons in the 10, 11, 12. Let's see how we do it in factoring. Now first of all, we have our different types of factoring. We have our levels of difficulty. Let's take the first one, greatest common factor, and we're going to start with the first skill, skill level one. Start off by doing a lesson first of all. So we have our interactive lessons, and then the practices to reinforce our skills, and then the test. So let's do the lesson. This is where the lesson will start off, how to factor. And all we do, we click on next step to get the next step of the lesson. Before we even carry on with the lesson, we can always go back to the basics and just revise on the basics before working through the whole of greatest common factor. Let's go back, carry on with the lesson. So first of all, it explains to us how do we determine and get our greatest common factor. Then it tells us, prepare to factor by writing down the greatest common factor followed by a pair of brackets, my greatest common factor followed by my pair of brackets. Now it says fill in the brackets by dividing each term by the greatest common factor. So we're going to take the first term, divide by the greatest common factor, get my answer and I put it in the brackets. Second term, divide by the greatest common factor and put it in the brackets as well as the third one. Now that we've determined our answer, we have to verify our results. How do we do that? By multiplying. So we multiply the first term as well as the second and the third one and if we get the same then we know that our answer is correct from our original expression. We can now ask to replay the solution or we can ask for a new example, all randomly selected, to go through more lessons. We're not going to go through lessons. Let's say we understand this. We can then go and do a practice. On that same skill, do a question, click on a factored form of. We only give the um, students different answers. They still have to work it out on a piece of paper and write it down. The reason for that being is that is the way that we do exams um, in school as well, on paper. So we don't give them the option to work it out on the computer yet. So they will work out their answer, select their correct answer. For instance, this one is incorrect, please try again. Now they can go back to their paper and see where they've made a mistake and change it. Or they can ask the computer then to show the correct answer. But not, not all, all only show. I want to know how did we get to that answer. So I say explain that to me and it's going to take that form and it's going to explain it to me step by step. And now we can see exactly where we've made our mistake. Okay, we can replay the same solution again or in the practice reinforce the skills and ask for more questions. After the reinforcing of the skills in the practice, we can then go and do a test. Let's do on that same skill, we do one um, question. And I'm just going to select that one, which is incorrect. Let's just take on a different level, perfect squares, level 3. And we work it out and we select our answer. Both were incorrect. So let's say that was our test for the day. We end our quiz and now we ask for the results. It gets marked immediately and I get my results. Where well, I can see now what expressions were used, what method, greatest common factor, what level, 
and was it correct or incorrect. So immediately according to these um, printouts I can see where do I need more assistance on. So then I can just go back on greatest common factor level 1 that specific lesson. So this is on the 10, 11, 12. Let's go and look at the admin. We go to the admin on 10, 11, 12. We enter in our password. We select our class. We select the student's name and now we have a look at the results. Again, all the tests we did will be less listed. The tests we just did now, we did a test on factoring, the date, the time we did the test, and we had 0%. Activity shows us where did we utilize our time, how long time did we spend on which activity, for instance on factoring, the date and the time start stop, we spent about 4 minutes on the factoring unit. This can be printed out and kept on the student's records file. So that is on the 10, 11, 12, the student and the admin site.